The last 25 years has seen a revolution in our understanding of carbon. Now the two pure forms of carbon that everyone knows are diamond and graphite. In fact, their names come from the ancient Greek. Diamond means invincible, the hardest naturally occurring substance. It's the pretty form of carbon. And if you look at diamond, it's made of atoms joined together. Each atom's got four neighbors in this sort of tetrahedral. It's like a scaffolding structure, which accounts for it, uh, why it's very, very strong. Uh, the other form of carbon that everyone knows about is graphite. And in fact, that means to write in Greek. And it's the material in pencils. It's the stuff you write with. And in graphite, the atoms are arranged in hexagons, hexagon sheets, one on top of the other. So these are the, the two forms of carbon that everyone knows. But in the last 25 years, a whole range of other structures have been discovered, and they're all really, really interesting. Now, for small numbers of atoms, maybe less than 20, chains seem to be stable. So this is where the atoms are joined one together to form a long chain. They can bend round to form a ring. But these seem to be the stable form for small numbers of atoms. Above 20, um, cages can form. These are called the fullerenes. This particular one here is the football molecule, C60 Buckminster fullerene. And you can see it's a cage of atoms. So that's different again. There's also nanotubes. These are a nanometer uh, in diameter. That's a thousandth of a millionth of a meter. And they're sort of tubes of carbon atoms, very, very strong and very, very long. Also, you can take a piece of graphite and you can take the sheets apart. So, and these are called graphene. And these were recently discovered. The chains were seen in the 1970s out in space. The carbon cages, the fullerenes, were discovered in 1985. And the 1996 Nobel Prize in Chemistry was awarded for the discovery of the fullerenes, the cages. The nanotubes were discovered in 1991, and in 2010, the Physics Nobel Prize was given for the discovery uh, and the, the uses of graphene. So all these things are very, very interesting. Now, for very large numbers of atoms, probably the most stable form is graphite, sheets of graphene, one on top of the other. And of course, there's diamond, which is composed of many, many millions of atoms. But there's also one more form of carbon, and that is amorphous carbon. When you put your bread in the toaster and you turn it for 10 minutes and it goes black, that black stuff is soot. And that's probably, uh, probably made of graphite sheets, really large sheets that are bended and twisted. And it may also be formed from carbon cages as well. So there's amorphous carbon as well. So how come carbon is so versatile? Well, one of the reasons is that the carbon-carbon bond is very, very strong. This molecule, this is C2, two atoms with a bond between it. This is a very strong bond. In fact, C2 has been seen in the surface of stars. Usually the temperatures are so great in the surface of stars that molecules are dissociated into their atoms. But you can see C2 in many stars out in space. It's a very strong bond. But the main reason for uh, carbon's versatility is its bonding. In diamond, each atom is joined to four others and uh, the carbon atom likes to have four neighbours, so each of these is single bond. In the chains, as you can see, uh, each atom only has two neighbours. And the way carbon gets around this is that it forms triple and single and triple and single and triple and single bonds. So in the chains, we have single and triple bonds. In the cages, uh, we have double and single bonds. All the bonds in the pentagons, shown here in purple, are single-like and all the bonds between the pentagons in grey here are double-like. So the, one of the reasons for carbon's versatility is not only a strong bond, but actually it can form single, double and triple bonds. And this makes it very, very versatile. So let's talk a bit more about graphene. Now graphite is loads of hexagon sheets, one on top of the other. If you remove one of those hexagon sheets, you get a single layer of graphite, which is called graphene. And in principle, it's basically hexagons uh, surrounded by hexagons surrounded by hexagons. Uh, but of course, there's always the edge where the bonding isn't really satisfied. So if you take, for example, the he one hexagon ring, you can imagine putting hydrogen on the end of each of the atoms, and you end up with uh, C6H6, which is benzene. 
And of course, as they get bigger, the sheets, you're going to have proportionally less and less hydrogen. But in principle, every graphene sheet is probably one of these hydrocarbons. It's called a polyaromatic hydrocarbon, a PAH. Now, there's various rules which allow us to work out the number of atoms in these sheets. And it's called the 6n squared rule, uh, where n is the number of concentric hexagons. So, for example, for just with the hexagon, n equals 1, the number of atoms, 6n squared, is 6 times 1 squared, which is 6 times 1, which is 6. So, obviously, this has got 6 atoms. For the next one up, well, we have one hexagon surrounded by another layer of hexagons. So, we've got n equals 2, it's two layers. The number of atoms, 6n squared, 6 times 2 squared, which is 6 times 4, which is 24. For the next one up again, in other words, a hexagon surrounded by hexagons, surrounded by another concentric layer of hexagons. So we've got n equals 1, 2, 3, where the particle radius is basically 3 hexagons in size. Then the number of atoms, 6n squared, which is 6 times 3 squared, which is 6 times 9, which is 54. So this has got 54 atoms, and we can use the same rule going bigger and bigger. Now, if you imagine that we've got a graphene sheet that's a micron by a micron, that's a millionth of a metre by a millionth of a metre, about the size of a current transistor, for example, then we're talking about 2,500 hexagons in radius. Then we're talking about something around about 40 or 50 million atoms in size. That's how big the graphene sheet is. Just to remind you how small these things are, if you put 3 million graphene sheets one on top of the other, it would only produce a crystal of graphite one millimetre thick.